Hey guys, Beat Rebels, Chris Tomer here with this morning mountain weather update on this Saturday. I want to go to radar first because this is our storm system, our next one, uh, moving from the Pacific Northwest through into Idaho, Montana, eventually Utah, eventually Wyoming this afternoon, tonight, and eventually Colorado tomorrow. So it's just a matter of time as it kind of pivots uh, to the south and to the inner mountain west. Let me give you the lay of the land here on the water vapor satellite imagery. So on this, your drier air aloft is in the oranges and the reds. Your moisture aloft is in the whites and the blues. And you can see our storm system right here. So it's going to make its move. It will start to slide south and then it will move into the interior. So it will bring that wave of snow into Utah, the Wasatch, the Hyoin, the Tetons this afternoon, tonight, and into tomorrow, and mostly tomorrow. That's when that wave will enter Colorado. So that's the next storm system. Now behind it, there's some energy up here in parts of the Gulf of Alaska. It's going to send a cold front down behind it, and then on the back side of that, and this still looks to be the case today, we're going to see a strong cutoff area of low pressure develop and snow hard across New Mexico and Colorado for a couple of days, maybe even three days. So we'll look at all that in my forecast. Here are the bullet points, and these really haven't changed. Storm system today, tomorrow, and into the fourth for the Inner Mountain. Uh, cold front then sweeps in behind it, five and six. That should be all snow. It should be cold enough for all snow with that. And then the cutoff low on the back side, 11.7, 11.8, and 11.9, comes out of the four corners, sweeps through Colorado and New Mexico, and that does still look major at this point. All right, so let me just show you the timeline for best snowfall. In the Wasatch, you can see the dates, Tetons, Colorado, Tahoe. You're really looking at, you know, essentially across uh, the Wasatch, Tetons, and Colorado, two different storm systems. The one that we're looking at now, and then that cold front plus that, that cutoff low that comes back. So that's what you're looking at with those dates. Here's the time height forecast. And this is for Breckenridge here in Summit County uh, of Colorado. This is humidity in the atmosphere through all the vertical layers. It's a, it's a slice, essentially, a vertical slice. The timeline's at the bottom. You read it from right to left, so the next 72 to 80 hours, roughly. So it's dry right now across Colorado, but that changes. By the time we get into tomorrow, the third, all the moisture starts to increase, especially, increase, especially in the afternoon hours tomorrow in, in Breckenridge and Summit County. You can see the green increasing there from, you know, the top of the high peaks all the way up to probably 18,000 feet. Um, so you can see the green all the way through the third in the afternoon that night and probably snows into the morning of the fourth as well. And maybe even into the afternoon of the fourth if we get that low to spin up, if there's a low that spins up in eastern Colorado and that kind of slows things down. Here is the, the jet stream forecast. So there it is by close of business. You can see the dip in the jet moving um, from Nevada, Idaho into Utah, the Four Corners, Colorado, Wyoming, Montana. By the time we get into tomorrow, we're really into the prime time here, 11-3. Low the, the trough, the base of the trough is right over the Four Corners, so snow continues across the Inner Mountain. Now this is by the 4th. So on the 4th, it's possible that the low may in get enhanced. It may have some, some strengthening and enhance the snowfall over the top of Colorado's mountains and northern New Mexico as it kind of spins up in southeast Colorado. So there, there may be some amplification, some better upslope, in other words. That's the end product. Um, here we are in 11.5. That's gone. Here comes the cold front down, 11.5, 11.6. You can see that north-south orientation of the jet. Now, what's interesting is, is on the back side, the southwest side of this, you can see um, the negative, it's gone negative, the whole trough is tilting, and it's going to cut off that area of low pressure. And it's going to sit, so that's 11.7, makes its move on 11.8 from the four corners into New Mexico and Colorado. And that's going to be a major area of low pressure, and it may still be there on 11.9. And then it finally moves away, but that may not be the end of the active pattern. You can already see a little bit of a dip in the jet in the Pacific Northwest loading up. Um, so let's look at precipitation here, forecast radar and satellite. This is 5.30 this afternoon, so your snow by this afternoon has moved into the Tetons. It's moved into parts of northwest Montana. It's moved into the Wasatch, the High Uintas. So then, by tomorrow morning, you've got snow in earnest all the way up and down from Big Sky to the uh, Tetons and into Utah. It's snowing in Colorado. Um, here we are tomorrow afternoon, and the snow is intensified in Colorado. It's still snowing in Wyoming, still snowing in Utah. Got some snow in northern New Mexico starting to break out. Here we are by Monday, 
And at this point, the low is, is starting to amplify in eastern Colorado, and that could again enhance some of the snowfall totals over the parts over parts of Colorado, the Front Range foothills of Colorado, and maybe even an inch of snow in Denver on the grass. Um, that is possible on Monday morning early, late Sunday into Monday morning. If you're above 6,000 feet, so the foothills and the Palmer Divide, you're going to get more accumulation. It's going to be colder. You may see two, three, four, five, six inches of accumulation in the foothills and across the Palmer Divide, but less in the Denver metro area. All right, then the low moves away. Here comes the cold front in from the north, so that's 11.5 in the evening. You can see the snow. It's all snow. Montana, Idaho, Wyoming, Utah, and Colorado, and it continues to snow in Colorado Wednesday into the morning. Um, so there you go. A lot of snow there, potentially even accumulation in Denver. We could see several inches of accumulation. It looks to be cold enough for that on Wednesday in Denver. And then the storm. Now, this is the key time frame. Watch what happens on the 7th. The snow is still there. The low is developing over the four corners, and then it's going to move and take all of that snow and run it right over the same places again. So there's 11.7 in the afternoon. Here comes the spin. Look at the spin. That's the low, and um, snow re-intensifies on 11.8 across all of Colorado, northern New Mexico. We, we may go from rain snow in Denver over to snow again. Um, and here we go by Saturday, still looking at snow over the mountains with rain, snow, Denver. Um, and then it goes, and it's gone. But uh, watch the end of the, the time frame here. Look at the next storm system moving into the Pacific Northwest on 11.11 late in the day. So again, we might not be done with this active pattern. All right, my latest numbers here for this morning's update. This is our first storm, the one that I showed you on radar that's happening now. Um, a lot of the snow that you see in the Wasatch, the Tetons, and Colorado happens this afternoon, tonight, and tomorrow. All of that in Colorado is really tomorrow. Um, but probably 6 to 10 inches for the Wasatch Front uh, in the High Uintas, down to Bryan Head. Probably 3 to 6 up in the Tetons and the Wind Rivers to Big Sky. <clears throat> in Colorado, out of this first one, probably 3 to 8 inches. That's probably going to do it. All right, let's look at the second time period here. And it's still major. Anywhere in pink, purple is over a foot of accumulation, and that is still a lot of acreage in Colorado and northern New Mexico. So what you're seeing here assumes that the cold front comes down, lays down a heavy blanket of snow, heavy accumulations, um, and then the low develops on that southwest side over the four corners and comes back and hits many of the same areas a second time. And that's why we get these large numbers uh, on this map and with the colder air in place behind that cold front I think we'll have good snow generation the ratios will be a little bit higher um, and so I mean you're looking at potentially one two three feet of accumulation in places so definitely gonna keep an eye on that but this is the third day now where those numbers have looked impressive um, up in the uh, up in the Wasatch another three to six uh, potentially eight to ten up there in the Tetons and Big Sky up into northwest Montana and also central and northern Idaho looking good. One to two feet up there in the parts of BC and the Pacific Northwest. BC looks good. Again, anywhere in pink purple is over a foot, so this could be a, a pretty good period for that. Unfortunately, I just don't have any snow during this time frame in the Sierra. So, all right, guys, that's going to do it for this morning mountain weather update on this Saturday. There's a lot to watch and potentially two, three storm systems. Take care and have a great day.